Hello, hello, and welcome to Starting Eleven's press conference. My name's Lloyd Marlison, and thank you so much for joining me as we take a pass at some of the week's biggest soccer stories. Now, this is the point in the season where everything starts hotting up. You've got leagues, European action, I even just reached the World Cup on my FIFA career mode. But one domestic title is still in play, and that is Serie A. Napoli have been playing some of the best football in the world this year, and even gained Pep Guardiola as an admirer after playing City in the Champions League. But the Italian club have put all their eggs in the Serie A basket and are attempting to legitimately challenge Juve for the title. It would be the Turin side's seventh straight Scudetto, which would be a record, but Napoli have established themselves as stylish underdogs and are pushing this thing all the way. With just three games left to go, there's only four points between them. One of the things that makes the race so exciting is that Napoli's stars are rumoured to be leaving at the end of the season, so this is the club's last chance for silverware with them. Even the coach Maurizio Sarri is rumoured to be on his way out, heading to England. According to reports, he is in pole position to replace the other Italian coach at Chelsea, Antonio Conte, at the end of the season, and he's instructed his backroom staff to begin learning English. Napoli are yet to offer the 59-year-old a new contract, which could open the door for Chelsea to swoop. Mauricio Sarri himself has been stirring the pot this week by telling the Italian press that Serie A risks losing fans because only one team wins, unlike the Premier League. Just imagining the nerdy bromance that would exist between him and Guardiola if they were working in the same country is making me feel all warm and fuzzy. Edison Cavani admitted earlier this week that there were slightly less warm and fuzzies between him and Neymar when the Brazilian first joined PSG as their record signing. The two bickered over a penalty kick back in September against Lyon, and Cavani has said that it caused a bit of a rift. He said the issue had been his focus of putting the team's goals first, and that while he'd help and support Neymar in his quest for individual accolades as much as he could, he couldn't put the needs of the team secondary to the superstar. He said they've since come to an understanding, but it's hard to imagine that was a compromise given that PSG has been giving Neymar special privileges basically since he touched down in Paris. After leaving PSG in their Champions League wake, Real Madrid caused Gigi Buffon to implode and left another top European club's goalkeeper in tatters this week. Sven Ulrich has had a great season as Bayern Munich's backup goalkeeper. He's proved an able deputy for Manuel Neuer while he's been out with injury, and has even got himself into the conversation for a potential World Cup spot. But he gifted Real Madrid a goal in their second leg Champions League semi-final tie and effectively put the dagger in the coffin of Bayern Munich's Champions League ambitions himself. German goalkeeping legend Oliver Kahn said that he recognised what had happened as he'd been in a similar situation against Real Madrid himself many years ago, facing a Roberto Carlos free kick. He said that Ulrich had clearly been in two minds as to whether to smother it or kick it, and when it goes wrong, you just don't want to wake up the next morning. The bigger story of such a close game as the Bayern Madrid matchup was, Marcelo admitted that the German side should have had a penalty for a handball that he committed inside the box that went unnoticed by the referee. Another goal for Bayern would have seen them through on away goals, so the decision not to award it was a colossal let off for Real Madrid, who have certainly ridden their luck on the penalties front in this Champions League campaign. It is unlikely that penalties are going to be what decides the final though, as both Real Madrid and Liverpool have goal scorers galore on their teams. Liverpool officially punched their ticket to the Champions League final by seeing off a late surge from their fellow Bostonian-owned club Roma on Wednesday. The final score was 4-2, but the two goals that Liverpool scored in the first half snuffed out any hope of a Roma comeback before it could even begin. With those two strikes, they also smashed a Champions League record for goals in a single season. They're now on 46 in 14 games, and that's even more mind-boggling when you consider that the previous record was held by Barcelona, who scored 45 in 16 games. Liverpool have another game yet to play, and they've already outscored the previous record by almost half a goal a game. And you wouldn't bet on Real Madrid's pretty dire defence to keep them out either in the straight shootout that's going to be the Champions League final. Klopp's bringing his big guns to Kiev, guys. From big guns to siege towers, Marouane Fellaini has had a complicated relationship with Manchester United's fans over the years, who've never truly appreciated the way that Jose Mourinho uses him as a last gasp destroyer. Still, you can't deny his effectiveness, and it was on display again this weekend as he headed home a last-minute winner against Arsenal. He ran to the crowd celebrating by tapping his badge, and Jose Mourinho after the game said that he was close to signing a new contract, causing conflicting emotions for Manchester United fans. 
Fellaini was asked about his relationship with the fans in an interview with Sport Foot, but he made bigger headlines for calling out former Liverpool player turned soccer pundit Jamie Carragher for criticising Fellaini's tackling, even though Carragher had recently been suspended from his job for spitting out of his car at a 14-year-old girl. Making digs at Liverpool players is certainly one way to endear yourself to the Old Trafford faithful, or at least certainly more effective than that weird GQ Mickey Mouse hair photo shoot. Ahead of the Arsenal match, Jose Mourinho and Sir Alex Ferguson had presented Arsene Wenger with a gift to acknowledge his services to the sport, and the three just looked like the best of friends. While the three of them are undoubtedly the most defining managers of the Premier League era so far, things haven't always been so chummy. A fact that Jose Mourinho acknowledged when he said that he regretted some of the comments he's made towards Arsene Wenger in the past. You know, he is a specialist in failure. Uh, I'm not. And Wenger responded in various ways, but most notably with a shove on the touchline one game between Arsenal and Chelsea. But Mourinho said this week that he feels like the biggest rivals are often the biggest friends, because they're the ones that push each other to the limits. It's an interesting take on friendship, but I think a sweet sentiment nonetheless. Just because he's made up with Arsene Wenger doesn't mean he's done trolling, though. Mourinho gave an impressively frank look behind the curtain at his attitude towards silverware this week, and he wasn't just listing his titles. When asked by a journalist which was more important to him, the Premier League or the Champions League, after Pep Guardiola had said that the Premier League was greater, Mourinho said this. I think we say the most important one is the one we win. If we win the Champions League, it's most important. If we win the Premier League, it's most important. If we win nothing, winning is not important. It's good that he's able to see the bright side of any situation, especially after Manchester United was knocked out of the Champions League by Sevilla. Manchester United was a major scalp for the Spanish side to take, but it's offered their manager Vincenzo Montella no protection at all, as he was fired this week after a poor string of results. Sevilla were winless in their last nine games, but perhaps more notably still was that this is Montella's second firing this season. He started the year at AC Milan before being dismissed in November, was picked up in December by Sevilla only to be fired again in April. The managerial merry-go-round spins ever faster. Argentina's manager should have a fairly easy job on his hands this summer at the World Cup though, as Lionel Messi is supposedly taking care of everything. He gave a lengthy interview in Argentina and admitted that he feels like this is his last chance to win a World Cup with the current generation of Argentinian stars. He also says that he thinks about the 2014 World Cup and the free kick that he mishit in the final every day. His lack of a World Cup is one of the biggest things that people bash Messi for, even though he's helped take them to two quarterfinals and a final in the last three cycles of the tournament. But could this be his year for glory in Russia? Let us know what you think in the comments below, as well as what other kind of videos you'd like to see on the channel. Give this one a like if you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any in the future. I'm Lloyd Marlson, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.